Hi, Madeline. Good to see you. We're just going to wait a couple minutes to seven. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Ten thousand reasons to bless the Lord. Hi, Leticia. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. I'll say amen to that, the lover of my soul. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Imagine 24-7 in heaven, they're worshiping the Lord. One day soon we'll join the choir in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. What a choir that's going to be. My soul, worship his holy name. Bless the Lord. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I'll worship his holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God that I don't have, I don't play an instrument. If I was playing an instrument, that's all I'll be doing on a street corner, just singing praises to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. There, oh, wow, he's been off for two weeks. The evangelist. He's been off for two weeks. He had the shakes, just like coffee shakes, probably, anyway. <laughs> anyway, but it's good to have him. Praise God. Just, uh, I'm just worshiping the Lord here a little bit uh, before uh, we're giving some time to people to come on, before we start tonight. And uh, hoping that God will move in as he did when uh, last Sunday. My, 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 last Sunday. I said, Lord, it's going to be, it's going to be, let me t stop this. I said, Lord, on Sunday, I said, Lord, it's going to be Father's Day. So I'm, I'm going to just give a little message uh, that I'm sure he gave me. He gave me the title and everything else. But I thought that it would be just a little message. <laughs> and God moved in i tell you imagine being here on my own and experiencing a visitation of god right here and i'm sure that many of you that joined us on wednesday on sunday you probably felt that as well i tell you i tell you i tell you i tell you that was a powerful word of the lord amen it was probably a thousand times better than what i thought because I say, you know, the crowds are going to be down. Everybody's going to be with their fathers or, uh, or families. Not many people are going to come and blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, man, the power of God came. And I had only a few scriptures. But the Spirit of God just squeezed everything out of me. Hallelujah. And a word came forth uh, again. Uh, you know, I want to explain this about the words um i'll say this to my family here uh to those that have follow us and those that listen to us um just a little insight okay uh as you as you know that lately uh actually not not much when we met together here at the school but lately the spirit of god is giving me 
a prophetic, a prophetic word, uh, tongues or interpretation or whatever. And, um, and that was really of the Lord. And, and it's amazing because through streaming, live streaming, the Lord has been teaching me to uh, be sensitive to him and to speak prophetic words. You know, that I have to go back because I forget wh what was said and I have to go back, go back home and then listen to the message again and see what God spoke through my mouth. And, and you say, oh, Brother John, so let me explain about that because this is very important. We're our school and uh, so we need to learn about these things. So when that happened, it only happened to that extent during this pandemic. Since I gone uh, live stream on Facebook, um, before that, it was very minimum. Okay, and before that, I was really a chicken. I will be. You know, I'm going back 20, 30 years when I felt that God was giving me a word, but because of the congregation, it was maybe too big or, or whatever the setting, I was very chicken to release the word of God. And I could have been pride, could have been whatever. And I, I, many times I did not release what I felt the Holy Spirit given me. And one of the reasons was because I was not really the preacher. So I was in a congregation and sometimes there were tongues and I will have the interpretation and I would not do it, then God will use somebody else. Or I had the tongues and I always disobeyed the Spirit of God in giving that because I, was, I, I, I didn't feel comfortable. So uh, when I started this live Facebook streaming, then uh, I mean, I felt comfortable. I mean, I didn't have no choice because I, I felt the spirit given a word and, uh, and I began to feel more comfortable because I was the speaker. So, um, so I want you to know, and then you have to understand that when God speaks like that through a person, he can only speak what's inside of that person and take his words uh, through that person. So he's not going to create something new probably that is not in me. <laughs> he's going to create something that, that he can speak according to the vocabulary and what's inside of me, the knowledge and the wisdom that, that he can get out of my being. Uh, and that's my understanding. Okay, but um, so uh, don't think that I, I was flowing on this all these years. No, I disobeyed God many times. And uh, Daryl actually asked me, he says, you know, we should talk about the gifts things, and, I, and we will once we get it back to the, to the building. And, and uh, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they have this kind of giftings, uh, the prophetic or, um, or uh, tongues or interpretation of tongues or, uh, or many other gifts that, you know, if we're not taught, then we might miss it. And then just like I did for many years, imagine many, many years, I felt the Spirit giving me a word but because I was not the preacher, I didn't want to release the word, and I was a chicken. Okay, so, uh, but now, uh, during this live Facebook, the Lord has been making me more comfortable uh, with it. So I believe that maybe after uh, we go back to our buildings and that, it will be a, a new thing for me. So uh, anyway, I thought that I, I, I wanted to share that with you for a while now. Because some of you, says, you know, um, people that know me, you know, he never really prophesied that much all the time. And, uh, and now he is. So it's a new thing for me. Uh, because the, the prophetic word that God gave me before for the past 30 years, I spoke prophetically as I preached. So I didn't say, oh, thus saith the Lord, nothing like that. What, what, I, what I did, I preached prophetically in uh, plain English. So, uh, and there are many ways that God can speak to us. You know, if you speak the word of God, that's prophetic. The word of God is true. The word of God is living and all of that. Anyway, enough with that. And uh, so thank you for joining us in a wonderful hot day out there. I tell you, it's probably about 25 or something like that. I had to ventilate this building. Uh, big building, but no air condition. <laughs> and I have a little bit of fan over there 
far away from here so I don't have to hear it. And, uh, and you say, why do you have to wear a jacket? Well, I don't want to show you my muscles. That's the reason why. Um, <laughs> anyway, but I feel that, you know, that if we do something live, I'd like to wear a jacket, if you don't mind. And um, so um, don't forget, before we start, we're going to do part four, I believe, on uh, marriage. Uh, and this goes for singles, married, widows, divorce, uh, whatever, because we need to have a strong home. And if you're older, maybe you can get a few uh, little tips from uh, what Brother John is going to share. Because the Bible says that we ought to teach the younger women how to love their husband for you ladies. And the men, you need to be mentors to a nation and to a world that their fathers are not at home. So you need to learn. We learn from each other. I'll learn from you. You learn from me and all that. So uh, anyway, so don't forget this uh, week from today. Oh, my God. At this time, next week, we, the, the pray meeting, Canada Day pray meeting will be done, will be over. So uh, <laughs> pray for that night. Uh, we have uh, advertising announcements on the radio, 93.9, in the Christian radio, six times a day. We have uh, given them an announcement for the, um, for the pray meeting. And I'm praying to God, hallelujah, that we will have a good turnout so that we can present prayers unto God for our nation. So we're going to be praying for the youth. We're going to be praying for education. We're going to be praying because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the school system. And uh, so education, the schools, uh, the economy, that's a big one. And I'm really for businesses. Businesses are hurting. A lot of businesses will probably go out of business uh, because, you know, they're running probably 50% less of the business than what they had before, or more, I mean, worse than that. So we need to pray for businesses. We, pray, we need to pray for the government. We need to pray for, uh, for the spiritual leaders of the church and that, of the churches in our nation and in our region. We're going to pray for Nova Scotia. We're going to pray for all of these things. So we have different pastors and different men and women that will be able to bring us to the Lord in prayer. Um, and then uh, we take it from there. So, you know, we're going to have a nice day and uh, pray for that. The day will be nice and sunny, not too hot. So, you know, you mean, Brother John, you think that you can pray specifically unto the Lord? Of course you can, you know, but it has to be according to his will, right? So uh, I like to have a beautiful sunny day, not too hot and not too windy. <laughs> so I'm asking God for a perfect day on Canada Day. And uh, we're going to go there, and uh, it's going to be a drive-in, so there's a huge parking lot, so uh, you can park anywhere. And uh, we have a little stage, and we have uh, uh, the sound system. So uh, no rain, no rain on uh, next Wednesday, no rain. So we have a sound system, and, uh, and we're looking now at doing it both. We're going to have a sound system so you can roll down the window, or or you can listen on the radio. So we're, we're investigating. I thought that it would be hard, but it looks like it's easier to do an FM uh, radio. So you'll be able to hear from the speakers on the outside, and if you're in your car, then you'll be able to listen through FM. Okay, so uh, anyway, well, we're working on all of that, and Steve is helping us with that. So uh, anyway, stay tuned, but please, you know, I, I put postings. I did all kinds of advertisements everywhere with a posting with the Canada flag and, and 155 Chain Lake Drive next, next Wednesday. Please, advertising, advertise it among your circles, among your friends. Don't be ashamed to be associated with this fellow here or with Revival Hour. Uh, you know, we, you know, wouldn't it be nice that we would make a big statement here in this region and have the parking lot packed of people uh, praying and, and to God, not a protest or anything like that, but we're praying for Canada because, you know, blessed, you know, the theme is blessed is the nation that makes God their God, you know, and, and, and oh, you will all agree with me that Canada needs to make God their God. Uh, Canada is in a worse situation now than it ever was. In the 80s, 90s, it was a lot better than what it is now. 
and now is really gone down. So we need to, through prayer, ask God for mercy. So please, you know, pass the word around. Uh, we need to find Christians that believe in prayer. If you know business people, tell them to come because we're going to be praying for, for businesses. Uh, you know, we're going to pray for their businesses. So, uh, and all, and, and that. So uh, make sure that you advertise it between now and next Wednesday. Okay, we're going to give you a little bit more um, uh, details on Sunday. So uh, if some people don't drive, what happens? Well, bring a chair. Okay, and as long as you keep six feet di uh, distance, you can, um, you can find a spot somewhere and worship the Lord. Okay, so uh, I think that we're going to be fine. So, uh, and then this coming Sunday, uh, I got the title again for the message. So, and I'm thinking, it's not what goes in, Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles a man, but it's what comes out. So I have the title, so we'll see what the Lord gives us for Sunday. And I'm sure that it's going to be a powerful word of the Lord as it was last Sunday. So uh, pray for that as well. And, um, and I think that's about all the announcements, you know. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the announcements. So uh, pray for that. But let me pray for you now. And we're going to open up in prayer for um, the service tonight so that we God can speak to the married couples and singles and widows and all of that. And uh, Father God, right now, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for that which you have done, that which you're doing, and that which you're about to do. Father, we thank you. Uh, give us the strength, Lord, to be patient. Give us the strength, O oh God, to, uh, to continue to sow and not give up. For your word says, be not weary in well-doing. For in God's timing, you will reap a harvest if we don't give up. So, Father, as we sow, as we, as we do that which you have called us to do, we pray, God, that we will be patient, oh God, that we will wait patiently upon the Lord. And, Lord, that you will manifest whatever needs to be manifested in this region, in our lives, in our churches, oh God, everywhere. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, in your timing. So, Lord, help us to be patient. And, Lord, we commit this uh, next uh, few minutes as we speak about marriage. Father, we, we submit ourselves to you and we resist the forces of hell in the name of Jesus. We, rem we remove every devil, every spirit of divorce, every spirit that will try to destroy marriages and relationships of God in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray, God, that through this time you will cover us with your precious blood. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Uh, speak to us. And, uh, and, and yes, speak to us individually. And, and that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you desire in this hour. And I pray, Father, that you will strengthen home, marriages, relationships, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And for those, O oh Lord, that are single, Lord, let them do it the right way, O oh God. Let them not make mistakes as many people have, O oh God, but let them, let them know how to choose and how to wait and, and all of that, and how to pray and all of that. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, that, that you will give us all wisdom in our marriages, wisdom in our singleness, wisdom, whatever we are, in life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that we will understand, Father, that we have to be godly, we have to be righteous for God to be Lord of our relationships and of our lives. So we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. And amen and amen. Praise God. Anyway, so I got a few things over here. But, you know, I want to read something else that, you know, people don't read the scriptures for marriages. But I felt to read the scriptures for marriages. I don't know why, but I do have some notes. And, um, and today, you know, last time we talked about the, the needs of one need of the women, which was um, uh, affection. Yeah, it was affection. And for the men, it was sexual. So uh, we're not going to go through that again uh, because then I'll get talking and we'll never stop. So go back uh, to the last teaching and uh, you can go to Revival Hour Ministries in uh, YouTube and everything is there. Uh, we have about 130 or 40 uh, teachings there. 
and you have all the marriage and you have everything. You have the whole school of discipleship there for a year. And if you go to uh, YouTube, type in Revival Hour Ministries and then one that says John A, period, click on that one. Make sure you put follow or subscribe and then click the little bell. There is a little bell there so that way every time that I post something on YouTube, then you'll be able to get a message in that. But, you know, the, the, the one that I want to read is different, <laughs> but I think it goes along with what I'm, I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, marriage, I mean, you can talk about marriage for a year, I tell you, because there's so many things that go on in a marriage. Uh, but I'm, I'm grabbing something from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll, I'll read a few, I'll jump from, from different verses. And this one, the title of the, in this portion of the scripture, it says, the Christian walk. So what does a Christian walk have to do with marriage? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked, right? So <laughs> it has a lot to do because, you know, if the Bible says, you know, this is the thing about uh, the Christian walk, so that means that we have to apply that as well in our marriage, in our relationship, and, uh, our, and ourselves as individuals. So let me read, and then you'll get the message here. So he says, I'll be reading from the Amplified, verse 17, and I'll jump to other uh, verses. He says, This I say and solemnly affirm together with the Lord, as in his presence, you must no longer live as the unbelieving, Gentiles live in the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. I mean, that, that's a good scripture. You know, he says, you know, don't have a marriage, don't have a relationship like the world, like the devil's world, because they don't have the wisdom of God, they don't have anything like that. So don't do it like they do it you know don't go to the arm of flesh you know to uh, a counselor that doesn't know the bible because what are they going to teach you they're going to teach you things of the world and with the wisdom of the world and what they have learned in there you know how many know that a lot of psychiatrists need a psychiatrist you know <laughs> or they need a christian counselor so uh so what he says over here is that you must no longer live like them. And that talks about our, our born-again experience. So, you know, if we're going to go into a marriage, we have to change the way we were to the way God wants us to be. You know, because, you know, that, that, that's what's going to help us in our marriage to be Christ-like in our marriage. So, I mean, this scripture over here... Uh, it really <laughs> explains it really good that we cannot be like we used to be. Uh, you know, he says, you know, like the unbelieving, like the Gentiles live, meaning, you know, people that were not part of the family at that time, in the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiny, emptiness of their souls. So I'll jump to verse 19. And they, the ungodly, in their spiritual apathy, having become callous and unfeeling, have given themselves over as prey to unbridled sensuality, eagerly craving the practice of every kind of impurity that their desires may demand. But listen to the verse 20. It says, but, you know, when the scripture says but, pay attention, it says, but you did not learn Christ in this way. So that means that, you know, I think that it, for us to, to have a better marriage, no matter where you are right now, and for those that are single, learn from this. You know, if, if you want a better marriage, sometimes we need to retreat. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day that when an army retreats, doesn't mean that they're losing. Now, that means that they're recouping, they're, 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 they're going to get their minds in the right place in order for them to study maybe their, the enemy, <clears throat> their enemy, and be able to plan uh, wisely how to overcome the enemy. So, I mean, so sometimes we need to retreat. So we hear the scripture saying, you know, you, don't be like the unbelieving, don't be like that, don't, don't, don't think like that. 
But he says, be, because why? You did not learn Christ that way. So that means that we need to retreat and say, you know, are we behaving, between both of you, are we behaving Christ-like? Or if what we say, what comes out of our mouth, is it Christ-like? Or is it worldly-like, the devil's world? Uh, are, are we talking, are we communicating between each other as the world communicates? Or are we communicating as two Christians having the Lord in the center of our relationship you know I, I mean that's 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 what it that's the way it should be that's the way it should be we should think christ-like we should be christ-like we have you know we talked about this on sunday we have the mind of christ and the bible says that he has been made wisdom unto us so we have wisdom and the bible also says that if you lack wisdom ask god for wisdom and then he'll give it to you so uh, what I'm saying, I mean, if, if you're a couple here today, you know, what I'm saying to you is this, commit both of you to do it right. You know, to, to, uh, to say, you know what? Our marriage is shaky right now. We made a lot of mistakes. I've been angry at you for so long. You've been angry at me for so long. Why don't we retreat and study Take an inventory of how we've been running things. And, and then as, as we do, then, then we'll be able to see what we're, what we're doing like the world and how we can change that. And then we'll look at the positive of the positive things that we've been doing as a, as a Christian, as being Christ-like. And then, you know, change the wrong ways, you know, the, the, the things that are not uh, uh, good for your marriage. You know, and agree with that, you know, and, and then uh, we'll talk about if you're the only one in the, in the, in the marriage that is willing to do something. So, um, uh, but, you know, if you're together right now, I mean, if you're listening to these things together, commit yourself to retreat, and we're going to talk about communication today, to retreat, communicate, and listen to one another. Because, listen, one thing that I found out as I'm studying this is this, is that the answer to all your problems, this is probably going to be the, the most important thing that is going to come out tonight, is this, that the answer to all your problems in a relationship, in your marriage, you have it inside of you. Not one of you, both of you have it inside of you. So how are you going to find out that answer? How are you going to find that answer? You, you'll never find out the answer if only one person is seeking the answer. Because the answer is in both of you because God, listen to this, it's very important. God dwells in both of you. God dwells in the female and God, and God dwells in the male. Do you see the Bible says that two should become one. So qualities of God, the Father, are in the female and qualities of God are in the, in the male. So what happened, not all qualities of God are in, in one person, but he, he chooses to place both things in both of you. So that way when you marry, then you become one and then you have what? You have the fullness of God in your relationship. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you're getting this one over here. So my advice to you is very simple, but it might be hard for you because there's going to be some, some work to be done. So anyway, so retreat, recoup, then say, you know, what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong? What are we doing that is Christ-like and what are we doing that is worldly-like? And then get rid of the worldly-like and you say, you know what? You know, I've been talking to you wrongly. I shouldn't be talking to you the way I am. You know, I've been bringing your past for too long and this and that. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing some worldly things over here that I'm going to have to bite my tongue and die of these things in order for us to, uh, to water our marriage. And, and, you know, we talk about in, the, uh, in, in number one, we talked about depositing in the bank. 
That means love, you know, acceptance, good words into each other. So we're depositing, we're depositing, you know, when you hate, when you mistreat, when you do it like the world does, you're withdrawing. You're not, you're not pouring, you're withdrawing. So what happens if you put 20% of love and then you fail and then you do something worldly, then that 20% comes out. So the next time you want to go and withdraw some love from your spouse, there is nothing there to withdraw. There is nothing there. There's nothing there. So we have to, you know, the, is, we're, gonna, we're going in the right direction right now. But, you know, that's a good word. Re recoup. You know, find out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. What you're doing Christ-like and what you're doing worldly-like. And, and, and be open. Because, you know, those are the enemies that you have. The, the worldly mentality is the enemy of your marriage. Because you're not of this world. Say, I'm not of this world. We're not of this world. Your marriage is not of this world. If both of you are Christians, you, you know, you're, you're not of this world. There's two aliens getting married that belong to the kingdom of God. So, you know, you have to be in tune with the kingdom of God in, in order to be able to function with the principles of the word of God and of the kingdom of God. So if one of you says, you know, what about if one of you is only uh, Christian and the other one is not? Then what happens, we apply, you know, some non-Christians, they really love their wives. And some, uh, some non-Christians, they really submit to their husbands. Okay, so they are, in, in some cases, there is some positive. So if the husband is not a Christian, and then what you do is you submit unto him, even though it is not a Christian, not in a bad way, you submit to his authority, and you let God fix him up. You submit yourself to him, and, you know, and, you know that, that's, that's a whole message uh, uh, aside from this. But you submit yourself, because the Bible says to submit ourselves, okay? You marry that person. Uh, if you marry him and you were a Christian, or both of you were non-Christians, and, uh, and then one of you became a Christian and the person is still not a Christian, then you have to believe that you and your household will be saved. But then you have to start, if you want him to be saved, or if you want her to be saved, you're going to have to apply the principles of marriage in, that re in your relationship in order for God to come in. Because, you know, if I, if I have to submit to my husband, as, as, the, as, the, as the Word tells me, that when I submit to my husband because of the Word of God, then God will work through him for me. And then what I'm doing, I'm releasing him unto God because God will work through him. But whenever I don't submit myself to, to, to him, then what happens then what happens then then god cannot move because you're not you're not applying the principle of submission in a relationship and and, and you know we don't submit to bad we don't submit to abuse we don't su submit to those things of course but we submit you know if your husband is nice you know i met a lot of husbands that they were not christians the wife was a christian a lot of husbands that were not a christian but they were nice people they were not a devil they were not anything like that they just needed to have you know, they were probably logical. Uh, they were probably, low, you know, they like to think things through and maybe they didn't come as fast as you did. Uh, but give them time. But apply the principles if one of you is, is not saved. So, but let, let's keep talking about those that are saved. So let me keep reading over here. It says, if in fact you have really heard him and have seen taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus revealed in his life. And then he goes on to says. Put off your all self. <laughs> you know, in marriage, you see, marriage, love manifests the problem. We talked about that, and I'll repeat this every week, every time that we talk about marriage. When two people love each other, it will manifest the problem. Not for us to run away from each other, and that's what, and that's what people do, because they have no knowledge, no wisdom, uh, no insight, no teaching. When you got married, nobody taught you how to, uh, how to be a husband. Nobody taught you how to be a wife. So what happens, we go into a marriage without really knowledge, and we're too proud to receive that. That was in part number two. We're too proud to be counseled. We're too proud to be told what a, what a, what a, good mar what a Christian marriage is and all of that. So what happens, but then we forget to, to uh, eliminate the all us. You know what I'm saying? So we bring a lot of baggage 
into the marriage. And a, I'm talking about a Christian marriage. So what happens, we bring in the, the, the old self, and that's why he says over here, he says, put, your, put, your, put off your old self, completely discard your former nature. <laughs> completely, that means, boom, delete. And he say, oh, Brother John, you know, that would be easy if we do it overnight. No, the Word of God tells us to delete it, to, uh, to uh, um, discard it completely. But uh, God knows that it's going to take time. And through the process, God will teach you how to get rid of the old self. And, uh, and he says, the former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewal in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh and tarnished mental and a spiritual attitude, and put on, the Bible says, verse 24, the new self. So you see, we're talking about the needs of the wife and the needs of the husband. And the reason that, that I, I want to grab this teaching is because we, we have different needs. Man has different needs than the woman, and women has different needs. So we got to learn to meet each other's needs, to know what my wife's needs are, and to know what my husband's needs are, and to be able to, uh, to complement each other and to help each other. And that's it. You know, when you see good come out of your spouse, uh, don't run away from it and don't bang them over the head or don't bang her over the head. God is showing you something in their lives that need to be fixed. So now you go for some quiet time with the Lord and you say, Lord, how can I help my spouse? How can I help him? How can I help her? I see this monster coming out of him. I see this monster coming out of her. How am I going to help? So then you help, right? So he says, you know, put in the new self the regener regenerated and renewed mature, created in God's image, God-like, in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation, therefore rejecting all falsehood. Anyway, so what I, you know, I was going to read the whole chapter here, but I want you to read, uh, you know, the Lord brought this to mind, so it's got to be a reason why. So read chapter 4 of Ephesians together and uh, from 17 to the end and go through it slowly. And, uh, and, and because, you know, what, what this chapter is telling you, get rid of the garbage. For you to have a Christian walk, we have to get rid of the garbage. And it doesn't say, you know, uh, you know, a little bit. He says discard it completely. That means delete it, get, get rid of it. Because, you know, the sooner you get rid of everything, then the better you're going to become as an individual and as a married couple. Amen? So anyway, so now we're going to jump over here. Uh, we're going to jump over here. And we only have time. Uh, as I was looking, I was trying to squeeze two needs. Uh, last time we did a need of the wife and the need of the husband. Today we don't have time to, to do two. So we're only going to do one. And it's the need of the wife. Again. So, and I'll say this, if you want to be the king of your home, you must learn how to treat your wife as the queen. Because women were created to respond to the way you treat them. Flowers don't do the tricks. Once you've done all you have to do as a husband, then flowers is okay, it's a plus. Right? But I'm saying flowers is not it. Because what they're looking for is their needs to be met. So uh, that is very important. So if you want to be the king of your... There is nothing wrong with being a king because in, in the Old Testament, the ladies used to call their, uh, their husbands Lord. That means master. <laughs> and some of you say, Brother John, you're nuts. I'm not going to call my, uh, my husband master or Lord. Well, you would. You would. If he treats you the way God wants him to treat you. Amen? Because you are created to respond to the way men treat you. Women are, are created to respond to the way men treat them. So if you're single today, you know, uh, if you're a man that is single and you want to get married, start learning from God. Le read a lot of things. How to treat a woman. 
as a queen, how to treat her with respect, how to treat her, how to adore her, not just love her, how to adore her, how to sweep her off her feet, how to make it make, make her heart palpitate uh, by the way you treat her and all of that. So, you know, I, you know a lot of us, uh, when we are first courting, and that's in my notes, what I, a lot of us, you know, we spend so much time together when we're courting before we get married because we love each other, we love and we, we can't wait to talk and blah, 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 blah. But then we're married for a few years and we can't stand each other. <laughs> you're saying, Brother John, you're talking to me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You know, <laughs> So that, that's, that's become a memory of their past, a memory of how we used to love. And for those that you continue to love each other the way you love when you first met, more power to you. God bless you. Thank you. Teach others to the, 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 the ingredients that you have in your marriage to do that. Amen? So uh, the, 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 the one that I want to talk about today for the women is this intimate conversation. One of the... Uh, one of the needs of, uh, of the ladies is intimate conversation. So uh, uh, they want to talk. <laughs> they want to talk. You know, uh, they see you as the head or they see you as the provider or they see you as the protector. That's what a husband should be, provider, the head, the priest, uh, the spiritual leader and all of that. Uh, but they see you as their guy as well. So what happens, they, 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 they want intimacy conversation. You know, they, they want to converse with you. You see, uh, men were task-oriented. <laughs> task-oriented. Uh, for those that know me, uh, I'm not a phone person. You know, if I talk to somebody, okay, the most, maybe I'll stay with five minutes. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to stay for half hour, an hour talking to somebody. Uh, why? Because men mostly are task oriented. A, B, C. Let's get it over with. You know? Okay? I kiss you. Right away, I want to take you to bed, get undressed, and let's have sex. <laughs> That's men. Men are task oriented. Women are more homey. They're more family. They're more... Take it easy. Honey, sex begins in the kitchen. You got to work me. You got, you know, the man says, what do you mean I have to work you? Yeah, you got to do the prelude. You got to do the preparation for the manifestation of the, of, <laughs> of lovemaking. But man, you know, the moment, you know, they go to the kitchen, they grab the wife and the, and the wife, you know, she has a good day, she turns around, she gives you a kiss, and right away, uh-oh, it's bingo night, you know, it's my night tonight. So what happens, you know, right away we're thinking the bedroom. Okay, honey, come, follow me. Wait, wait a minute, what do you mean follow you? I'm cooking. I said, yeah, but you kiss me. So I kiss you, I love you, I'm married to you. Well, you know, so men are task oriented. So they, they think differently than women, and we have to understand, because that's where a lot of marriages clash. So what happens, you know, people lack, uh, people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. So a lot of marriages are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For, you know, little things like this is what makes a marriage. So what happens is this, realize, men, that you're task-oriented. You know, and the reason that God made women differently, that, that sex begins in the kitchen and you got to take your time and you got to do a good prelude, you got to adore her, you got you to gotta do whatever. Uh, so, you know, you, you got to learn to slow down a little bit to her level, to where she's at. Because if you're going to meet her needs, you're going to have to meet her needs and, and be like what, what she wants, what she needs. And she doesn't need somebody, bling, 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 you know, just like the evangelist. He blows in, blows up, and blows out. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not the way it is. You know, that's why a lot of evangelists are good in doing that because they're men. They're task oriented. Let's blow in, let's blow up, let's blow out. You know, that's the way men think. No, relax. Because the beauty of a relationship, the beauty of a sexual relationship, the beauty of having a happy marriage is learning to meet each other's needs. So let me read. So plan, you know, this is one thing that we fail to do. That when we first 
get um, together, when we like each other and we already know that we're going to get married or we'll probably get married, we do a lot of dates. We want to see each other all the time. Let's go to the restaurant. Let's go and see a movie. Let's go do this. Let's go to church. Let's go do it. So we're always planning, planning, planning. And then you get married, you have a kid. <laughs> Where in the world is it planning? <laughs> the planning is on the wall. It, 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 it's out. So what happens, and that's how we say we. That's how you begin to destroy your marriage slowly. Because, hey, we live together. We watch movies together. Hey, we sit down together. We, we go to church together. But you don't plan specific dates with an agenda. And what's the agenda? That's called for the women. It's called conversation, communication. You know why? Because, you know, uh, they want to talk about their future. You know, they might not understand the present fully. You might, because you're task-oriented. Oh, I got a job, I'm going to make so much money, and I'm going to plan this, and I'm going to buy a car, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and this and that, and you already want to take the world. And then you go and present your vision to your wife about everything that you're going to do, and then you scare the bejeebers out of her. Why? Because you haven't communicated and you have taken the lead without communicating with the person that will give you the blessing to where you want to go. Oh my God, man doesn't like to hear that. So you see, women, they want to talk about the future. They want to talk about the present. They want to talk about where we're going, what we're going to do, and, and all of that. So they want to talk. Women has a special, you see, you have to understand. Women has a special antennas. They call it instincts. Okay? I can go, uh, you can go to your wife and say, you know what? I'm meeting so-and-so. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have a meeting with a person. And I say, oh, honey, what are you, what's the meeting all about? Oh, the meeting is an opportunity about this and that. And, uh, you know, he offered me, you know, $10,000 a month and all of these things. So blah, 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 blah. So the wife says to you, you know what? I don't know, but there is something about this guy. And then, um, and then you say, you know, Honey, just be careful when you go to this meeting. There's something. Yeah, but you don't know the guy. I already met with him 10 times. You know? And this, do not neglect that. Do not neglect because that, remember, God dwells in both of you. That can be a signal of the Spirit of God to warn you just to be careful. Right? She didn't say, do what I tell you. What she said, he says, you know what? After you share what you're sharing, I don't feel right about this person. You know? So they have a special instinct that God has given them to protect men that are task-oriented. You see, men are here, but they're already thinking over there. I was like that. Right? So I have learned, I have to learn, and I'm learning to slow down, okay? Because I want to go and take the world, right? But I have to understand that I have three boys and I have a wife, <laughs> and they're part of my life, and I'm one with one of them, right? The person that I marry. So what happens, you know, and this is where we fail. That's why conversation is a benefit to you men. It's a huge benefit. Conversation with a wife and making it part of your life is a big benefit to you because God can warn you through her instincts without meeting anybody. There is a sense in them because they are nurturing, they are protectors as well, as well, you know, they're, you know when, when, the, when she has kids, she protects the kids. So the same drive to protect the kids is the same drive that goes to protect you as her husband. 
because whatever you do wrong will affect her and the children. And that's where a lot of, uh, a lot of um, chaos happens in relationships, that the husband does their own thing without consulting the wife, and then chaos happens, and then the wife was never aware of it. So, number one, the, uh, the husband was not, was not communicating his vision with the wife because he thought that he's the head, she's just the uh, kitchen lady, or she's just the cook, or she is the, 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 uh, the one that will look after my kids, or the one that goes and work part-time somewhere, and the one that picks up my kids, and all of that. So what happens mentally, in a way, we diminish the role of our spouses. And it can work the other way around. You can do the same thing for your husband. So it can work both ways, but today we're talking about the wife, right? So what happens, it's a benefit for you to make it part of all the decisions that you make. Okay, and we're going to talk about a little bit about her behavior. So, so what, if you do it right, as unto the Lord, you know, the Bible says, submit yourself one to another as unto Christ. You, the man is the head of the house. Yes, he is. But that doesn't mean that he's the controller of the house. God is the controller so we are the head, so that means that we have a special anointing to do things and to, be, and to have the anointing that gives us the ability to be the men that we ought to be, the husband, the father, the provider, the guide, all of that. So that's the anointing that we have, is not to control the wife, but one, one wisdom that men fail to see is the wisdom that women if they share with their spouse, with their wife, it's a plus and a huge benefit for them in business, in private life, and so on. And that's where we fail as men. We fail in that because we say, okay, you know, I wear the pants in the house. You know, I, I'm the boss. I'm this and that. And a lot of cultures are like that. Spanish cultures are like that. Other cultures. And there are other cultures where the women is the one that is the boss. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Right? So in, in, in some cultures, <laughs> the woman <laughs> is the boss. So that's why this scripture that God gave me today is so fitting to what I was going to talk about tonight. Because over here it says, put the old self away. That means delete it completely. Because your culture doesn't go with my wisdom. Your culture is contrary to my word. That's why we have, you know, all things have become new. The old has passed, so all things are new. So what happens is this, is that we have to be careful when our culture is another country. Because our cultures are different. You know what I'm saying? There are some culture that, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, in one of the churches that I pastored, uh, there were people from all over the world. And when we used to have this pot blessing get-together, you know, food and stuff, there was one culture <laughs> that the men will sit and the, and the wife will go and serve him. Imagine that. That is contrary to my mentality, but it's contrary. <laughs> we ought to serve one another. <laughs> Uh-oh. And uh, if you're from the culture, there goes your culture. <laughs> okay, uh, if she's the queen, who should be serving who? Should the queen be serving the king or the king should be treating the wife as the queen? Aha! Right? So you go. I mean, I, I go to a fellowship with my wife and sometimes, you know, she says, can I get you something? And, you know, I can say, okay, but it's not a culture thing. It's just a gesture on her part. Hey, honey, I'm going to the table. Do you want something? You know, I can say yes sometimes, you know, but, but she's not serving me all the time. But I do the same thing. I go to the table and I say, honey, you want something? And then she says, oh, oh give something to, to Daniel or whatever. So what happens then is not a culture thing. It's a team thing. So she does it for me and I do it for her. So there is no one guy sitting 
and saying, wife, serve me. Because that's a culture. And, and, and that won't work in marriage. So what happens, you will have somebody that, that, that is married to you because of a worldly culture. That's why the beginning of this, he says, he says, you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live in the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiness of their soul. So what happens is that don't live like the devil's world. Don't do it like that. I mean, if you were, if you're from a country that the woman was nothing, to God, she's everything. So you have to change the mentality in order for you to have a good marriage. And I believe with all my heart, I believe this, you know, this is coming to mind here. I believe with all my heart that a lot of beautiful Christian people, they come to Christ, they bring the culture, and they miss out so much love and so much sparkles and so much butterflies in their marriage because the very thing that stops all the fireworks, that stops all the good things, is, is the culture that becomes the very cork, the very obstacle for the marriage to blossom. And some of you, if you come from a different culture, you know what I'm talking about. So, so now, even though the woman is, the, even though the husband is the head, husband must love their wives and respect her input. So, you know, she wants you to be part of the conversation, not to control you. But she wants, she wants you to speak about life and about the future, what you're doing and where you're going, and then she'll tell you what she's doing and her dreams. So it's a communication thing, it's a conversation thing that both of you continue to grow. You don't stop growing when you get married, you continue to grow in conversations. Because there is more now. Now she might have fear of the new life. Maybe she's not, uh, she doesn't think that she's a good mother, or uh, she doesn't want kids, or she wants tw 20 kids. You know, I, I have husbands that come to me and they say, uh, Brother John, he says, you know, my wife wants 10 kids. I say, is she nuts or what? You know, I mean, you know, I don't want 10 kids. I want to marry her and I want to enjoy my relationship with her. You know, so I always tell people, you know, when you get married, wait three years uh, for the first child. Enjoy your, your marriage together for three years and then have your child after three years. And then the next child have it three years apart. Don't have one after another, then because that's gonna buy, that's gonna hurt. So try, uh, and you say, well, you know, I don't believe in pills. I don't, you know, there is a program. There is a program that you know when you can get pregnant and when you cannot get pregnant. Okay, and they offer it free of charge. Some uh, churches and that that you and, and you'll even know. They'll say, you know, if you want a boy. Then you got to do it so many days after this and so many days. So they got it down pat. <laughs> so there are many ways that you can be not on the pill and, and, and do it naturally and plan. But, uh, but I'm saying, you know, plan it properly so, so that we, uh, you don't have too many kids all at once. Okay, he's two years old, he's three, he's three and a half, he's four. And, and man, you have so many babies and they're all close to each other. You know, give the baby attention for the three years and then bring the next one and the next one and the next one. So that's my recommendation to you. Okay, so uh, anyway, so respect and r respect her input. So on the other hand, the danger is this, and we talked briefly in a moment ago, is when the woman is a control freak and has a hard time submitting, though the husband loves her. So what happened, we're talking about culture again. So what happens, some countries, the man is the boss, the woman is, doesn't have too much authority in a marriage, but in other cultures, the woman is the boss. Why? In some cultures, the woman becomes the boss because the men have failed them a thousand times. Imagine that. So I've seen even Canadian people, you know, that, that are that are, I won't use the word slaves, but let's use the word slave in a good way. They're slaves to their wives because they fail them so many times. So they surrender their anointing, 
as the head and the priest of the house, and they say, whatever you want, baby, I failed you so many times, so you lead, as you guide, as you protect, as you do everything, I have failed you, and I have failed you. So what happens then, then and then if the wife, then if she takes control of that, then that's, that can be chaos for a relationship, because that's, a, that's not the way God created a married to be. Right? So we have to understand that. So, you know, I'm glad that the Lord brought this to mind because we have to get rid of the old you. And we have to get rid of the traditions and the cultures. We have to try to do it God's way because God's way will have the sparkles forever. God's way will have the butterflies. God's way will have that for many years to come, right? So, and you want that. You don't, you don't, want, you don't want to say, oh man, I don't want to go out with you. What's the use going out with you? You know, so, uh, so my, my encouragement is this, recoup, f find what you're doing worldly and what you're doing Christ-like, plan dates, okay? So you have to say, okay, every Wednesday night. You don't have to go and spend money. If you want, you can go to a restaurant and, and make it a conversation thing. And husband, let please her that day because it's a conversation date and she'll open up and you can plan. Or you can go for a long walk and sit at a park, okay? So you can, you can do these things and talk, communicate, share your, your, your struggles, share your fears, share, 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 converse. Because, you know, you will, you will please her so much that she'll say, wow, he's opened up to me. I didn't know about this and I didn't know about that. And, uh, and now, uh, you know, he's so happy that I was able to give him some little bit of wisdom and all of that. And, and you know, how many times the wife tells the husband one thing a hundred times and the husband doesn't do it. But yet comes an outsider and tells the husband the same thing that the wife has been telling the husband for 10 years. And they already say amen to that. Right away, and the wife sits there. I've been telling you this for 10 years, and you never listen to me. And that happens in many, many marriages. The wife is the signal to protect the husband in the decisions they make. That's why conversation is very important. It's a benefit to the husband, and it's a need to the wife. So uh, anyway, so I don't want to spend too much time there. But for you to be a control freak, die of the past. You have to do it God's way. You have to say to God, forgive me for being a control freak. You got to go to your husband and say, forgive me that I, that I have a wrong thought of men. I think that men are good for nothing. And, and that's the way I was brought up. You know, they, they fool around and on the wives. They do this. And that's the culture that I came to. And, and, and that's, how I, uh, that's how I see men. And even though I love you, even though I marry you, that's, that's a bug in my life. And I need to get rid of it. W when is that going to be exposed? In conversation with each other. Honey, I'm sorry that I've been really bad to you. I'm sorry that I've been a control freak. I have to learn to submit myself to you because you really love me and, and you don't deserve this. You don't deserve my punishment all the time, right? So, so, and all of that happens in conversation. That's why it's so important for, in her, that, that's her need and it's so important for her to converse with you and it's a great benefit to you if you listen to her, <laughs> right? But if she is a control freak, then you talk about that and you fix it. Anyway, so, so many women has lost respect in men, even though they are married to one. So you have to talk about these things so you can help each other's weaknesses. And that comes how? In conversations. Shutting the world down and having dates. If the kids go to sleep, having date no matter how tired you are or do it early in the morning do it when you're when you're that and, and have a plan always begin to praise each other at the beginning in conversation and then you know honey how you doing anything you want to share you know I want to share something I had a meeting today at work and I don't know how it went you know you know I, I'm trying I'm trying and I know that you want me to make more money but uh, but I'm trying trying and it's not happening right now I don't know what God is doing blah blah, blah. and then let the wife speak Right? Because she might have some wisdom. She might see something that you don't see. You see, God shows direction through both of you. And the big thing that I said today is this, and I'll continue to read it, to, to say it, is this. The answer for your problems is inside of both of you, not one of you.
both of you. Because God is in both of you. And God did not marry two people to become one for one to be the leader. The only leader is God. But he's placed his wisdom in both of you. So that way when you converse, you're meeting her need. But actually you are, you are benefiting from meeting her need. Because something good is going to come out of her. And she'll say, honey, you know, don't do this, don't do this, and don't do that. And, and she'll say, you know, I don't feel right about this, honey. And sometimes they're wrong. But they, they pay attention to that. Because sometimes, you know, when they give you a signal, and, and that could be for the Lord to strengthen the direction that you're going. Okay? Even though she might be wrong. So you don't go back and say, oh, you were wrong in that. You know, I really got it and this and that. Say, I'm sorry, honey. I'm ju I just love you too much, and I don't want you to be hurt, and I don't want you to make the wrong choice. Okay? But so respect her, whether she is right 90% and maybe wrong 10%. Respect those signals, because those signals are from God, most of them. Okay? So, see, the enemy's goal is to keep both of you from communicating. Because the answer to your problems is in both of you. As you love each other and as you converse with each other, that's where the answer of God is for you. You know, God leads you through both of you because the Spirit of God lives in both of you. So right now, you know, I'm going through something. i got to talk to my wife soon. Uh, that the wife is, uh, is thinking in one direction and I'm thinking a different direction. So, so I know that when I meet, when we meet and talk about this this week, then we're going to come up with a solution because the solution is in her and in me. And we, have, and we both have to compromise and we have to say, okay, maybe you're right or maybe you're, or, or show her, prove to, to her or to him that your way is more wise than the other spouse. So then what happens when you begin to converse and communicate and then you'll come up with the answer. You will if you submit yourself one to another and respect each other's input. Okay? So don't forget that. And I, I have to do that this week. So uh, anyway. Um, and <laughs> this is what I put here. <laughs> and be ready for the answer that you're going to get. The final answer that you're both going to get to be not the one that you expect. Always remember that. Because you see, and that is with God, you know, with God we, we prayed and we prayed and we, and we think that this is, this is what we should do and this is what we should get. And then we kind of disappointed. Isn't the Proverbs where he says, you know, man, man plans his ways, but he interrupts them. So what happens, be prepared that when you converse, uh, when you have a disagreement, one wants to go south, the other one wants to go north, that, that the answer is in both of you. And if, if, if you guys decide north, whoever chose south before, you know, just accept it. You know, accept it that that, that, that brought you to a You see, we don't fall in love, we grow in love. So what happens, disagreements, uh, when we come together and we, be, and we come to an agreement, we have grown in love. So say, honey, you know what? You were right. Or she will say to you, you know what, honey? You were right. And, and, and you make so much sense in what you said. You know? So what happens, and that's, that's the beauty of marriage. Anyway, so isn't it amazing that when you are courting, when you are dating, before you get married, you talk a lot, but then for some reason you stop talking, and talking was not empty talk. You know, what, you know we stopped talking the way we did before. And that is such a, a disgrace, and that is such a, such a giving in to the devil, you know, to destroy our marriage. You know, and, and what happens is when you destroy, when you allow a destroyer to come in, because that's what we're doing. When we shut him down and we don't communicate, when we don't meet each other's needs, that we're doing, we're allowing the enemy to come in. And what happens, we don't converse anymore, we don't talk anymore. We did when we court, we couldn't wait to talk to each other, but then we stopped. You see, talking to each other led you to a wedding day. You know, but after the wedding day, it didn't stop there. Life continues. So you got to continue co to communicate and to meet each other's needs. So what happens, when we communicate, we got to learn to shut the world. Shut it off. Shut it off. 
And the priority there is one to another. Your priority is your family, is your husband, is your wife, and then you gotta say, okay, is the devil come in in any way to our, to our marriage? Is the enemy has come in into our relationship? Let, let's recoup, let's, let's look at it, and let's rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And, says, and then, you know, then truth comes out when that happens. So sit down, shut down the world, and communicate and share how you truly feel, right? So you got to share, you know what? It bothers me that you leave and you, and you stay longer in the office. And, uh, you know, I need help in the house, you know? I, I share this with a couple, and, and this is something that, uh, that really worked. Saturday was a nightmare at home. <laughs> a nightmare. Why? Because my wife worked, I worked, and Saturday was laundry day and cleaning the place. And then it came to a point that I got busy on Saturday out of the house, because I knew that she might lose her cool. And rightly so. Because, you know, she worked all week and she doesn't mind doing the laundry and cleaning the house. But at times she's felt that she's doing everything. I'm working, I'm cooking, and I'm doing this, and nobody's helping me out. And that was a cry. And I said, man, you know, what's wrong with her? So what happens, I had to communicate and converse which I failed to do at the beginning, and Saturday was a nightmare, okay? But then I said, okay, then, 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 then because I was hard-headed too. So then I, I said to her, I said, okay, what will make it better for you? And then, okay, what am I doing now? I'm conversing. So how can we make Saturday a better day for you, honey? And then she said, well, if we all help, Okay, so let's, let's have a job description. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, so what do you feel comfortable in doing, honey? Oh, I don't mind doing the laundry. And she's good in doing laundry. I don't want to do laundry because I'll put color and white and then she won't talk to me for a week. <laughs> Just kidding. So she does the laundry and, um, and she'll sweep the floor. Okay, and, uh, and whatever. So then I say, okay, what's my job? Okay, well, if you do, uh, we have two bathrooms. So if you, if you do the bathroom, and uh, after I sweep the floor, a day later, then mop the floor. We have hardwood flooring, so mop the floor. I say, okay, that will be my job. I'll do the bathroom, I'll do that, and maybe once every two weeks, I'll clean the fridge. Okay, that was my job. Okay, what's my, other son, my, my son's job? For him to do his bed when he wakes up, to do his bathroom, okay, the other bathroom, and, uh, and to behave. <laughs> then we have a dog. So, you know, the dog goes four or five times out for a walk, okay? Uh, so what happens when we work this, Saturdays became pleasant. <laughs> Imagine that. How? Why did we accomplish something pleasant? We, we accomplished something pleasant because she didn't feel like she was the only person doing everything, number one. And number two, I conversed with her. We had a conversation about it, how we can help her. And you know, I don't mind. I do the dishes, okay? I do the bathroom, I do the floor. I clean the, the, the fridge. My son does his bed and does whatever, and she does this and she does that. So now we're all functioning together. And so what happened, because we converse, something fantastic came up, and now I don't feel that I have to get out on Saturdays. I mean, I, I do get out every day, but I'm saying I don't get out for that reason. I get out happy and I can come back anytime because it's a regular day. Okay, so remember that conversation, the answer will come. You see, if I didn't converse about her problem on Saturdays, you know, I will have a nightmare. And if I wasn't a Christian, then I'd say, you know, what kind of woman did I marry? She was a nice girl when I married her. Look at her now, she's a devil. 
You know, she's this and this and that and that and that and that and that and that. And then what happens then, oh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go and entertain another relationship. You see, everything that we're teaching is to, is to prove marriage proof uh, or um, divorce proof. How you can protect yourself from an affair, how you can protect yourself from going as far as a divorce. Okay, so conversation, meeting her need, okay? So, uh, and a lot of times, you know, the, the wife, you know, the wife has different needs, you know, she'll call you at work and say, honey, come home. I said, what do you mean, come home? You know, one wife called the husband, said, come home. I said, what do you mean, talk to me here? I said, no, I don't, want you to, I don't want to talk on the phone, I want you to come here. Fast, 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 fast. So the husband thought that it was something really emergency. So he, is, he took off from the office, he went to the house, and then the wife was busy doing something, and he said, sit down there. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm sitting down. I said, okay, just sit there. And she did her thing, she conversed with him, I said, okay, now you can go. You can go back to the office. So sometimes we need to learn how to meet those needs. So that, you know, so that means, why did she do that? Maybe she, her love bank was very low, okay? Maybe she didn't feel that she was special. So she wanted to try you to see if you're going to leave the office and you're going to come here. And, and by doing that, then uh, you came to her rescue for whatever what she was going through. So you show her some action, you show her some love, and then you sat down. She told you to sit down and you sat down. And then she conversed with you for a little while. And then she says, okay, thank you, honey, for coming. I appreciate you came. Now you can go back to work. Now I feel better. So, you see, we have to be able to see the signals in order for us to be, to be um, communicating properly. So, communicating about finances is a must. You know, this I'm going to talk some other time. But communication about finances, if you hire a situation that is important, it might show up later and it hurt you. You see, one of the things that destroy a marriage is finances, right? And that's the reason that if you converse, if you communicate, then you can, you can protect each other in the decisions that you make about finances. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into finances today, but a lot of couples, I used to be terrible with uh, finances. Now I'm married to an accountant, and she's not only an accountant, she's a controller, an accounter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to tell her, listen, you're, not a, you're a controller at work, not at home, you know? But I thank God that she's a number person. I was never a number person. So through my relationship with her, I became better in finances. So, but I don't want to talk about that. Finances will kill it, amen? So if you hide a situation, don't hide it. Tell the truth, even if you lost some money. Tell her, he says, you know what? I made a wrong deal, and I should have consulted with you, but I made a wrong decision, and I lost $2,000. Or I lost this, or I made a wrong decision. What do you think? And this and that. And get her input into the situation. Make it part of it. You know, I made a lot of mistakes, and, and she got mad at me. But then she cooled off, and then she came, and we worked a solution. Why? Because the answer and the solution is in both of us. It's in both of us when we communicate about the chaos that we're facing. Okay? So right there. So anyway, do not be hard on each other when living together if you're always putting down don't put yourself down then your partner won't trust you and will be forced to create a secret life so that's why you know don't don't communicate like the world communicates right insulting each other putting yourself down look what you did you know and uh, you know men tend to okay you know okay forgive me okay and uh, they say okay she forgave me and that's it and then the wife three months later she brings back everything that happened from 1929 until 2020 you know you know they have a harder time to delete the information <laughs> men they don't have a hard time deleting the past uh, women tend to because they're created differently right so they can bring up things from the past. And, and uh, I learned this through counseling people. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, so don't, don't, you know, if you don't communicate, then you'll force each other to create a secret life. And that is the beginning of an affair or that's the beginning of, uh, of your marriage going all the way down. So that means that she or him, you start dreaming about having a perfect relationship with somebody else and then what happens, then you open the door to the enemy 
and then you, 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 you begin to be open to another relationship. And what happens, the next relationship is probably not going to be a, a, a good thing for you because it's going to destroy your, your wife your, or your husband and your kids and your family and his family. So, so it destroys many people. And that's, and that's something that we don't realize that we make, when we make wrong decisions and destroys our home, we destroy many people around us. Okay, so I'm going to close quickly. Um, your enemies. I'll, I'll read this. Your enemy number one uh, is making demands. We don't make demands. We don't say, if you don't do this, I'll kick you out. If you don't do this and this and that. If you, no, we don't do that. We converse and we work together. We're a team. Nobody's better than the other one. Nobody is too proud to clean the bathroom. Nobody's anything like that. So we got to work together. Amen. And what we can do uh, while we're talking about cleaning is that, you know, hire, if you can afford it, hire a lady to come maybe once a month. You know, spend a hundred bucks and then she'll go, or 200 bucks if it's a big house. And then, you know, let them clean all the corners and everything like that. You will make her really happy or you will make the person that cleans very happy. Amen? So, making demands is your enemy. Number two, enemy number two is being disrespectful. Respect each other. You know, uh, when people get mad, uh, you see, when, when, when we start getting mad, it's a signal that something is taking place. So, the answer is to communicate and find why we're mad, why we are at each other, you know. Did I get upset? Of course. You know, the Bible says, you know, be angry and sin not. Because, you know, I'm still pinching and she is as well. So we have these agreements. We get upset sometimes and all of that. But we work things out. Then she calls or I call and says, you know what? We got to make up. You know, we got to converse. We got to talk about these things. We got we to gotta communicate, you know. And uh, because when we don't, then we start thinking, oh, man, who did I marry? What happened to the woman that I married? What happened to the men that I marry? And many of us say those things, right, many times. And that is a bad seed in our minds to start creating a, a secret life. And that's what you have to be careful of. So be respectful, okay? Be Christ-like. Jesus did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Learn from Christ. You know, uh, go through the fruits of the Spirit. Kindness, uh, long-suffering. Go through these things. And that's why over here in this chapter, he talks about putting the old self away, deleting it, and putting the new self. You know, so with the new self, then go into your marriage with the new self and destroy the old you. Expressing anger. Expressing anger all the time. You know, so, uh, and then what happens, you know, if, if children are around, my God, then the children are witnesses to all of this chaos all the time. And what are we teaching our children? You know, so what happens if you have to deal with anything, bite your tongue and then converse away from the children. Don't bring your children into your chaos because what happens, we are discipling them to being like we are. So if mommy was full of anger, guess what? Either your son or your daughter will be just like you. So what happens, and then we, 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 the, our kids begin to grow, and they become to be angry. If you disrespected your wife or, or if you disrespected your husband, then your kids will disrespect the one that you disrespect. And then the, the, the one that has been disrespected, they said, hey, how come my son or my daughter disrespects me? Because they becoming just like the one that is disrespected in the house. So what you're doing, you're making disciples with your behavior. So that's why the Bible says, train them, how? In the ways of the Lord. Train them in the new life. Don't train them the way the world, the devil's world trains them in hate and fighting and cursing and, and, uh, and uh, banging the wall or uh, scaring all the kids in the house and all of these things. These are children. And the Bible says, what did we read a couple of weeks ago? Jesus said, if you cause any of the little ones to sin, and you teach him, listen, and you teach him anything that is contrary to my teaching, 
Jesus. He says, it will be better for you to have those things that a mule has here and be thrown into the sea. So your children are God's children and you are taking care of them and the Lord says, look after them and apply my principles to raise them. Don't raise them according to their devil's heart in you, but raise them with my principles. Pass on to them love. You know, a lot of kids today, they don't want to get married. Why? Because they see the marriages that they've been brought up. They don't, they don't, uh, a lot of kids don't trust women. Why? Because they've seen an adulterous relationship in their homes. So what happens, you see, they, they are victims of what we do as parents. You know what happens? So what, what we do, it, it, and if they're victims of, of, uh, of what's happening in your marriage, fix it up. Go and talk to them. Say, forgive me. I'm sorry for what I have done. I'm sorry for all the mess. I'm a new person now. Forgive me. I says, you know, I lose it sometimes and this and that. Forgive me. You know, and that's what they want to hear. And I says, you know, will you forgive me? And let them say, I forgive you, Dad. I forgive you, Mom. And then work it out, you know, because they'll see that the problems out there, that, that marriages have their challenges. But what happens, you don't want them to hate to be married. And then what happens, they, they'll grow up disrespecting women or they'll grow up disrespecting men. Or they'll grow up craving for a father or they'll grow up craving for an older woman to be their mother. You see, a lot of men, listen to this, I'm, I'm glad I said that. A lot of men, they don't marry a wife. A lot of men marry a mother. Not their mother, they marry somebody that will take the place of the mother. So what happens, they have a, a relationship, but to them, to the man, that's the mother. So if that's you, if you've been acting like your wife is like your mother, you better repent from that and change your attitude and change your way of thinking and say, honey, forgive me. I have placed you in the place of my mother. I says, you are my wife, and from now on, I'm going to treat you as my wife. You know, your wife doesn't want to be treated like you're the son, and she doesn't want to spoil like your mother spoiled you. You know, so, and, and you know, and that's another topic. Keep the in-laws out. Your garbage is your garbage. Your garbage is not for the, the, the outside forces, friends, people, in-laws, outlaws to give you wrong wisdom. If they're praying for you and they're giving good wisdom, then so be it. But I says, don't share your garbage out there. Fix your garbage within the house because the answer for your garbage is in both of you. So if, if, the, if the answer for your problems is in both of you, then what happens, that will force you. If you know the answer is in both of you, you know, if somebody told you, okay, you, you know, uh, you're going you're gonna to go and play lottery ticket. I mean, we don't believe in lottery ticket, but let's say that. Lottery ticket. And the, and the winning ticket is if you submit to your wife <laughs> and you converse with her and you share with her, you'll have the first four numbers and she'll have the last three numbers and then you go and play them. Will you do it? You would, right? If you believe in lotteries and that. So it's the same thing over here. So you see, the answers for your problems is in both of you when you come together. That's the way God has created women to need conversation. And God has created men to be task-oriented because sometimes he will need that to protect the, the wife because they'll think fast when the, when the wife thinks differently. And then, then he comes down to her level to communicate with her so he's learning wisdom, he's learning something powerful that will help his marriage. Even though that's not his need. But by meeting her need, he's become a better man. Anyway, so being disrespectful, expressing anger, 
dwelling on mistakes, past or present. Dwelling on it. We have to learn to forgive and forget. Okay? And if you can't forget, then go and stand, go and get a pastor, get a, a spiritual counselor, and go on and have an arbitrary, somebody in the middle, that will be able to tell you who's right and who's wrong and what you should do. Okay? But bringing in the past, imagine, who is the accuser of the brethren in the Bible? The devil is. Who is the one that accuses? Is The devil is. And sometimes, you know, you forgave something to uh, your spouse a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. But whenever you get mad, guess what? You still bring it up. You still bring it up. So what you're doing, you're attacking your other half. You're attacking your other half and you're hurting yourself because you're one. Anyway, so questions. I'll close with this question. Question for him. Do you spend enough time talking to your wife about her personal concerns? Answer. Do you give her at least 15 hours of your undivided attention each week? What? 15 hours? Yeah. Do you want a very rich marriage? You have to understand that when you meet her needs, she's already taking a shower and she's already ready <laughs> for what you want. <laughs> right? Because she's happy. Right? So you got to learn. So 15 hours. So, it's, you know, if you're spending half hour in quality time now, start increasing it until you get to 15 hours. When you get to 15 hours per week, giving special attention to her, and you can all be watching TV but, or whatever, or a movie or, a, or, a, or whatever, but give her that attention, right? 15 hours a week. So uh, each week. If not, why not? Do you try to develop a better understanding of your, of your wife's favorite topics of conversation? You know, I know what she likes. So um, what, am I going to talk about the things that I like? She knows what I like. But, you know, the, the mistake that I'm going to make is talk about the things that I like. <laughs> right? <laughs> then she'll go, I'm tired of listening to what you're like. You know, talk about what she likes. Right? She goes there and, uh, you know, she, she, she doesn't buy too many things for herself. And she's finished buying her purse. And she says, honey, look at the purses. Which one do you like? You know, because she's going to go back to work in the office and all of that. Which one do you like? And, uh, you know, I, I like that one. And be truthful. I like that one. And sometimes if I don't like something, I'll tell her. I don't like that one. And we have learned in communicating with each other. We understand that I'm not going to agree with everything she says. That if she tells me, you like this dress? Yes or not. Do I like this bathing suit? Yes or not. You know, so I'll give her my, my, my honest opinion. So recently she bought a purse and the purse came. And I picked up the mail, and I said, hey, your purse came, and she ran out. And then uh, the next day, I said, that was, you know, the purse was not around. And I said to her, man, that was a really nice purse. I love the color of the purse. So what's happening now, I'm meeting her need. And as soon as I said that, she was working. She got up with a big smile. She ran to the bedroom, took the, to the purse, came back, and I says, yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? I love the color, I love this, and this and that, and you know, what this is, if I put my credit cards in there, it has a special thing that nobody's able to steal my, my PIN number or whatever, blah, 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 and she starts explaining, and I pay attention to that, right? Why? Because I want to meet her needs. Amen? So, uh, how can you improve? Are you guilty of any enemies of an intimate conversation? If so, how can you change? So... Communicate with her how you can change or even go on your own and, and find out how you can change. And questions for the ladies. Do you miss the quality of conversation you had a while while you were dating? If so, what can you do to help restore that? If you are separated overnight or for a few days, do you feel disconnected from your husband? Or are you happy he's gone? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the other day, as you, some of you know, that I went away for three days. You know, my wife working from home, my teenage son at home. I need a break. 
So I, I went for three days to spend time with God. God called me to be with him. And I went to spend time with God. She, she missed me. But I, I went. And then when, she, when I came back, she says, do you, uh, <laughs> do you enjoy being away from us? So I smile. In a way, I'm saying, yes, I enjoyed it. But it was not negative. It's not that I couldn't stand you guys. It's that God called me to be away. But it was hard for me to be uh, with, uh, with my boy and uh, not enough sleep and blah, blah, blah. So it was good for me to get away. So I was truthful to her. And she, and, you know, she didn't take it personal or anything like that. She knew that it was good for me to get away. And I didn't really go crazy that I was away. So how do you feel when I came back? You know, I mean, how do you feel when your husband came back? So, you know, when I came back home, I said, okay, the guy that cleans the bathroom, the guy that cleans the floor, the guy that cleans the fridge, the guy that does the, the thing, my help has arrived, right? So she was happy that I was home, and maybe she missed me, oh, I missed his kisses or whatever, but, you know, I, I know that when I came home, I said, oh, he's come to help me with my teenage son, <laughs> right? Which is fine. I don't mind that, right? So, so you know, this is how we get to know each other. So anyway... So, uh, okay, here it is. Would a few hours of reentry help when you are first reunited? What interests do you and your husband have in common? What can you do to develop your understanding of his favorite topics of conversation? So, you know, just because I'm a man and I have to be uh, sensitive to what she's interested in, she also has to be sensitive to my interests are as well, right? So she knows that church is number one or God is number one. So, you know, she'll talk about, you know, how's the church going? How's, how's your uh, live streaming going? And she'll talk and this and that. And that uh, because she knows that that's important to me, right? So I talk, I talk about, <laughs> about her work. How is your, how, you know, and she comes, you know, when she's frustrated, she comes and she tells me about her work. And I listen and I give her input. Oh, sometimes it don't work when you give her the input because you tell her, right? And, she, and, uh, and sometimes they don't want a new input. They just want to, for you to hear her. Okay? So anyway, so uh, I'm almost done here. So um, uh, to consider together, now to consider together, do the enemies of intimate conversation prevent you, for taking, for, uh, prevent you from talking to each other as often as you should? So if the enemies that we spoke about, the, what enemies? Being disrespectful, making demands, expressing anger, dwelling on mistakes, past, present, and future. Does those enemy prevent you? Of course they do. So if so, what can you do to eliminate them? Right? So how do you eliminate them? Okay, honey, you know, we're, we've been disrespectful. We've been angry. We've been, we're bringing things from the past. So let's eliminate that. We, can you commit yourself to that? If you commit yourself to that, I'll commit myself to that. So we eliminate that so the devil doesn't have anything to come in. Anyway. So then lastly, how can you rearrange your schedules to allow you to give each other 15 hours a week or of undivided attention? Will the time you currently spend doing something else be better spent with each other? So anyway, so he's talking about communication, dating, again, working in 15 hours or undivided attention. And 15 hours, nothing, it's seven days, right? So two hours and five minutes or whatever. Per, per day, uh, you know, being together. If you live together, I mean, you're going to be together for more than two hours. So, you know, spend some time. But work towards spending more quality time than you have now. Anyway, I hope you, I hope you enjoy this. Um, uh, please do send me an email if you have a topic, if you have a question, if you have all of that. And, um, you know, one thing that I put here at the front is, is this, is that when, when we come together, it will manifest problems that we have from the past. Okay? So, in conversation, you will find out his garbage and her garbage. And you might know the past, but now through conversation, you'll begin to know how he affected him or how he affected her. You know? So, uh, and, and, you know, you are two broken vessels, you know, broken people from the world that have become a Christian. And now there is a lot of fixing. There is a lot of things that we have to put aside in order to bring Christ and to be Christ-like and to put the new self. 
So anyway, so love manifests a problem. So anyway, you can go back to this. Next week, we'll probably go into one of his needs. And um, or else, then I'll get a lot of emails from the man and says, what are you doing to us? You're destroying us. Anyway, Father God, I thank you for tonight. Lord, I thank you that this is such a important topic because this is what's going to keep the devils away. This is what's going to um, affair proof us from having an affair or, or creating a secret life outside of our marriage. So, Father, help us to, to uh, submit one to another and help the single people, Father, to begin to take notes and to, and to understand what a marriage is all about and how they should, they should have one. And for them to find the right man or the right woman for that relationship, oh God. So I pray, God, your blessing upon every home, every marriage, every situation. I, I pray for the kids, Lord, if they've been damaged in any way. Father, I pray, God, that you will show the parents how to fix the situations, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all the children, Father, through this pandemic. Lord, that they've been stuck at home and fearful for the... Uh, for the, for the virus and whatever has been going through their minds. I pray, Father, that you will touch and protect them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, that you will just show them the way, O oh God. And make those homes, Father, I speak peace to homes. I speak peace to the relationships and to families, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for this time of sharing, O oh God. And I pray that couples will begin to share, will retreat, to recoup, to remove the worldly thoughts and to implement the word of God and the ways of God into the relationship in Jesus name. Amen. Anyway, so thank you. And I uh, can't wait to see you on uh, Sunday and uh, who knows what the Lord is going to have, but I know that it's going to be something powerful. And then uh, next Wednesday, please, 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 please. I want to see the parking lot with a lot of cars. Invite business people, invite Christians, and go after them. Say, if you believe in prayer, get out there. It's only an hour. Let's show the city of Halifax that Christians are going to pray. It's not a protest, and it's not nothing like it's been happening. No, we're praying for the nation that, brought, that God brought us to. Some of you were born here. Some of you came from other countries. Some of, some of you came from other, uh, other provinces. And the theme is... Blessed is the nation that makes God their God. So please uh, um, advertise around your circles. Let people come. And even people that don't know the Lord, let them come. We're going to pray for families, right? Let them come, and maybe somebody will get saved on that. So anyway, so that's happening there. Then the 12th, July 12th, we're here in the building. And then July 19th, we're in the park. So we'll, we'll announce it probably Sunday, what park we're going to go to. And uh, we're going to start going out, 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 letting people know uh, about Jesus. God bless you. Love you. This is Brother John from Revival Hour. And you know that I'm fighting for you because I love you. Amen. I want you to succeed. I want you to be strong in the Lord. I want you to be trees of righteousness planted by him to know the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you Sunday or maybe before that. God bless you.